And finally, the nominees for Best Picture voted by all members of the Academy are... It's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> and I have realised I do seem to work on a 12-month Oscar to Oscar calendar. I don't know if I'm the only person <laughs> who does that. <laughs> I think you are. This is your Christmas, um, as opposed to the rest of us who love Christmas. <laughs> Although it's been quite stressful, I think, this year as well. Mm. Obviously, it's been slightly longer lead up because of the delay. We should tell you it's... that we're talking about the Oscars. We're talking about the Oscars. <laughs> we are talking about the Oscars. What did I say? Oh. I don't know if we mentioned it. But yeah, it's seven days to go. So it's really heating up. And it's getting more and more clear that it's maybe not going to be as straightforward and locked yeah, in as... Nobody has a clue what's thought. going on or what's going to win or... Yeah, whether it is going to be a predictable year, especially in things like the acting categories like it was last year, mm. um, or whether it's going to be completely up in the air. It's an incredibly diverse year this year. This yeah. is like the first time I think I've ever seen the lineup look like this. Yeah, so I'm just looking at the list of some of the things that happened this year. So obviously the first time ever that two female directors were nominated together. Um, yeah. Riz Ahmed was the first Muslim man to be nominated for leading actor. Anthony Hopkins was the oldest leading actor nominee at 83 years old. This was a weird one. Glenn Close was the third actor in history to be nominated for an Oscar and a Razzie for the same role. <laughs> <laughs> And then, the, yeah, the big one at the moment is the Best Actress category, which has just been bizarre. Every single major awards ceremony, it's gone to a different person. So, you know, Viola Davis won the, the SAG Award. Kerry Mulligan's won the Critics' Choice. Andra Day won the Golden Globe. Uh, Frances McDormand won the BAFTA. And BAFTA's sort of thrown things in the air a bit this year because they've changed how they nominate the top awards. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the ones that have been winning in other awards actually weren't nominated there. So it, it's been really mm. hard to use them as a, a precursor. Yeah. So, yeah. So what we're going to do today is we are going to discuss the best picture films, aren't we? We're, um, we're going to go through um, what we thought of them, what they've been nominated for. Matt's going to tell you about what the chances probably are because I'm not <laughs> at all up to date and I haven't even watched all the films yet, unfortunately. Um, it's the first time ever that I've I've not had the, the time to to really get involved in it and and it's because i think as well it's been a really such a funny year and there's been no cinema and it's like my enjoyment's not been there as it usually mm -hmm. is it's just um, like it's been put on pause hasn't it yeah it's not a, so it's, it's like, like oh interim, right yeah. well i'm not really ready for this i'm not really like we haven't done anything or seen anything or, you know so i i feel like i'm it's kind of frightened me actually because it's the first year in over <laughs> a decade that i've have not really been um in, involved in it yeah but we'll we'll jump into the films because I've been yeah. watching them this week. I have watched quite a few now. I should say as well, there's only eight eight this year. I'm sure they said to us that there'd be ten nominees, but yeah, they only announced eight. So these are the ones that keep coming up time and again, though, aren't they? So yes, yeah. Um, yeah so it makes sense that it's the, these eight films. Um, so we're going to start um, with the father. Yeah, um, which uh, stars Anthony Hopkins and Olivia Coleman. Um. I watched this only last night, actually, for the first time. Mm. So um, the film's been nominated for production design, editing, adapted screenplay, supporting actress for Olivia Coleman, and uh, leading actor for Anthony Hopkins and Best Picture. Quite a lot of nominations. It's, it's quite a lot, yeah, considering. considering. It's an extremely um, small, compact film, and... Um, the basic gist of it, um, not to give too much away, is it is a film about dementia and it looks at it really profoundly, intimately, uh, I thought. Um, from both sides, you're seeing it from how the family view their loved one and, and what they're going through. and then and it, But it very much is showing you it from um, Anthony Hopkins' point of view. Yeah. I thought it was very, very good. I thought it was really moving because he's losing himself so at times he's just like his old self um other times he he's very quick to anger because mm. he doesn't understand he, he he thinks people are lying to him and he snaps into to, into anger very quickly and then he's confused and and lost and and it was i just thought it was extremely well done i think the the screenplay which it's come from um the stage um, yeah. The director has, has um, adapted his own stage play into a film, and um, I thought it was 
really, really well done. Um, the thing that stood out as well, um, which obviously you can't do with a stage play, is the the location. They really made that its own character. The yeah, it's a, re- it's a really nice flat. <laughs> yeah, the flat itself is actually a character, and and you, it, it's used as part of the confusion. So you see in the flat change in small ways and then you see the same flat users like the doctor's office and it's um, like yeah, a care like home and, and it's stuff. you know it's all the same. It that, that layout is, is the same and you recognize it. But mm. it's all how it's like being seen through through um, a, p- a person who's who's suffering from dementia. I think you um, probably need to like give it a second viewing to probably appreciate it fully because I think the first time round, like you, you don't you, notice the changes in, in the flat, yeah, at all. No, until you've actually watched it through once, you're not yeah. going to know what to look for. Um, I thought Anthony Hopkins was brilliant. Um, I I do definitely think that um, he's he's really well deserving of this. Um, nomination mm. um obviously i haven't seen a lot of the others but i would say for me i would say he's a hard one to be if there's anybody better i'll be impressed because mm. i thought he was fantastic in this it was a one-man show really um, yeah he definitely uh, he, he does just carry was the in 95 percent of the, the film and, and he's he really is asked um to do a lot the mm. range of what what he's asked to do in this is um is like quite profound um so i i was very impressed um olivia coleman i thought was really good um mm. but i i have a problem like well not a problem but i have a, a kind of a thing with supporting performances um whereas a lot of the time i'm thinking well is it really worth being nominated for I and i'm kind of right, and yeah. about this one i do think she was really good i, I think some of the scripting for her wasn't as good as it was for Anthony Hopkins. Mm, uh, yeah, there wasn't as much for her to do, really. Yeah, it's a lot all. of just yeah. asking the same questions and saying dad a lot. Yeah. I'm here, dad. Dad? Yeah. Where just, are you, dad? I, I, dad? I, think, I think she was good. And the thing with Olivia Coleman is she she can just walk into the room and do it. And, yes, you know, yeah. you know you're going to get great things from it. Mm. Um, I'm just, I'm not sure. It's clearly I'd have Academy to, like I'd, her, yeah, obviously. I'd, yeah, I'd have to see what the others have to offer. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm a bit like, mm, with that one. Um, but yeah, overall, very impressed with the film. I thought the staging of it was really good. Production design well, clearly had um, a great deal to do with it. So that, that nomination itself is, is very warranted. Mm. Um, and, and same with the um, screenplay and the editing. They, they, they do play huge parts in, in the overall film so i i think it's um it's quite deserving of of most if not all of its okay. nominations okay i won't burst your bubble but <laughs> um the way things are going at the moment it's good it's, it's picked up a lot of the so father yeah. was quite late to be released so the momentum has really picked up especially for anthony hopkins yeah. bearing in mind that chadwick boseman has won everything across the board so far mm-hmm. apart from the bafta which has yeah. obviously then sparked this this new trend. Um, mm-hmm. I think its chances for adapted screenplay have increased um, yeah. substantially. Nomadland was the one to beat up until this point, and now actually I think the favour's going in the father's way. Yeah, um, yeah. The, the other ones are interesting because production design. It's you know you're up against Mank and yeah. things like that, very Hollywood mm-hmm. um, and throwback style and things like that. So yeah, it's an interesting yeah, one. It's one uh, of those that's <laughs> probably, you know it's been know. acknowledged, but it's probably like unlikely to come away with with. It's one of those. It, it could be that it triumphs over Nomadland and Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, but it's. It's one of those. It's it'll either, I think it'll one. either come yeah. out with nothing or it'll come out with two. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah, it, yeah. It completely depends on the night, but that makes it really exciting. Fantastic. And what? Yeah. So what was the first film you're doing then? The first one I am doing is Judas and the Black Messiah, uh, which I watched yesterday as well. And I was really looking forward to this. Right. And it is very good. I will start by saying that I think the trailer was fantastic. Mm-hmm. And maybe the film didn't quite live up to that expectation, but it is a really solid entry. So yeah. I'm going to start by talking about one of the best supporting actor nominations, which is Daniel Kaluuya, who plays um, Fred Hampton, who was the chairman of the Illinois chapter of the Black Panther Party mm-hmm. uh, in sort of like the late 1960s. And yeah, without knowing much about the real person, I thought actually he might be quite a frightening character. Yeah. 
and I wasn't sure like how militant he might have been, you know, in terms of promoting violence. Only, but actually, he's not. He was only twenty-one, wasn't he? Or something? Apparently, yeah. yeah. He was very young, so. But yeah, he comes across much older and wiser in the film. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it turns out in the end, he's actually a, a, an extremely caring figure. You know, he believed in non-violent politics. You know, I think mm-hmm. it's 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 hard to separate the people from the the, the context because the context itself yeah. was really heated, and you know, with all the. Um, the police brutality and all the race relations that were going on at the time. What I found really interesting, and it's kind of a coincidence, really, Mm -hmm. that Mm. two Oscar films this year actually feature the same things. So The Trial of the Chicago 7 has Fred Hampton in it due to like the subject matter. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, what a coincidence that they're both in the same year. Yeah, I think they're very timely films obviously mm-hmm. with the black lives matter movement and even th- films like the united states versus billy holiday mm-hmm. although it was set a bit earlier it was very similar it involved the fbi it's, it's funny how you know you can go through like periods where topics uh, come up yeah. quite a lot we see it like a lot with, we talked about the diana <laughs> you know, the yeah, buses. Like buses. <laughs> i was gonna say the diana films that are gonna come out mm-hmm. but yeah uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's really interesting but yeah daniel kaluuya has won across the board so far and it's a very confident performance very charismatic mm-hmm. and he brings a real sort of presence to the role and yeah. i think it's because a lot of his dialogue is comprised of the speeches that he has to make um even a lot of the time he's not doing speeches he's still got that same sort of precision and smoothness and yeah it's really like convincing like it's it's it rolls off his tongue as if it's his own words and it's yeah it's really yeah. fantastic and his accent and dialect work is great too it I, I made me think it surely it should have been in the leading category i don't, I don't know but I don't know. So yeah, I think I think this is probably one of the locks of the night. Nobody mm-hmm. else has won anywhere else. I don't think anyone else is going to go look in. Yeah, so that's good. Um, so I know which one to go with for that. One. <laughs> <laughs> they can go with whatever you want. Make a note of that. <laughs> well, you might instead want to go with the other. This is unusual. The other best supporting actor nomination, which is for Lakeith Stanfield, who. Mm-hmm. Um, was a big surprise at the nominations because nobody really knew that he was being considered in this category. Yeah. So it was a real surprise that he got nominated and because he hadn't been nominated anywhere else. Um, He plays the FBI informant, Bill O'Neill, and interesting character in a way, and it's interesting that they chose to show it from his perspective because... yeah. You know, as a as a black man himself, he's not actually really into the whole civil rights movement. It's kind of gone over his head. He's he's more sort of down on his luck and just stealing mm-hmm. cars. I wonder if that's why Daniel Kaluuya wasn't nominated for leading actor because the film is from this other person's perspective. Probably, yeah. It's, it's funny trying to work out what the criteria is sometimes, whether it's length of time on screen or whether it's perspective. Mm. Um, so yeah, no, I think this was a really really good role. It was good because he had to play like two sides like the duality of the character the one that the fbi sees and the one that um the black panther party sees mm-hmm. um and there's times where you see the really subtle inflections of panic and paranoia when th- things get out of hand and they do get out of hand or and he gets put on the spot quite a lot um, i don't think he's going to win obviously i think um, yeah daniel cullier has got that um sorry i will with <laughs> with through the rest of cinematography mm-hmm. i think it's a really dynamic and visually pleasing film to look at i think it's really inventive um, almost no, no two shots are the same. I noticed mm-hmm. even even within the same scene, you know, it always moves around. Um, yeah, really nice sort of framing of things and <laughs> mobile cameras and stuff. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I don't think it's going to win in this category. We will talk about another film that I think will uh, screenplay. Obviously, it's a true story. Yeah. It's a biopic yeah. of sorts. Um, really timely, great subject matter starts and ends with archival footage and interviews and it's the kind of film that ends and it shows you some text and you shake your head in disbelief of yeah like yeah some of the reality of what's of what's gone on in history uh, it reminded me of the departed a bit this film because of the whole rat and the web yeah. deception yeah i can see that line. yeah and then yeah a chances of best picture i, I don't think it's going to win best picture i think it's i think it's in the middle of the eight i think it's sort of sits in the middle yeah um, so oh sorry there is one more nomination for best song I, i'd listened to it. it it's like a funky pop song with loose references to civil rights i don't think it's going to win i think it's probably bottom of the pile and it's called fight for you so okay yeah sorry someone rambled there oh, <laughs> no, that's i think it's, cause it's fresh it was fresh in my mind yes. from yesterday no I'm, i it isn't um high on my list this one i have to admit it was mm-hmm. it's not one i fancied that much 
Um, but I do like a true life um, story. Um, I do I do like to, yeah. to see them. So it's definitely um, Daniel Kaluuya's film, him. though. One hundred percent. So the next one I'm going to um, talk about is Mank. Um, now, so in another year, this might have been all anybody was talking about. It's <laughs> David Fincher. It's you know been this huge um, production with with so many stars and people you'd know, you, you know you know and and it's about hollywood and mm-hmm. pe- real people Irving thalberg and louis b mayer and you know all these really famous people that we know the names of um but i feel, I feel like it's kind of like come out and people are going oh monkey yeah and then moved on <laughs> yeah <laughs> you yeah. know um but it's got a lot of nominations it's got 10 nominations it's got mm-hmm. score sound costume hair and makeup cinematography production design supporting actress leading actor uh director and best picture i mean it's <laughs> it's like across the, the board yeah. um to be honest production design definitely well deserving of that hair and makeup the same um same for costuming you know you can definitely look at those and go yeah i can see why that's there Mm-hmm. Um, the score I hated actually. Um, <laughs> I it was always it, just, it, it was just always there. There was always the score. It like there was barely a moment when there was like no score, and I found right, it yeah. really off putting. They were always trying to like um, assimilate a classical film. Like, just, yeah, they had, like, and it, I just, score it really brought me out of it, and I just didn't like it at all because it was always there, and I, I just didn't like what it was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, supporting actress for. Amanda Seyfried, absolutely mm. no idea why that's there whatsoever. <laughs> she was lovely. Most invisible she's been in a role. God, I just don't know why she's yeah. been nominated because she didn't do anything. She the just characters were boring. Yeah, I she just had a few lines. She didn't do anything. She mm. just sat there, looked pretty, had a few drinks, talked to him. Yeah. That was it. There was nothing yeah. to like. <laughs> there was nothing to stand out. Why has she been nominated? I don't understand at all. Um, that one um, and yeah like you said it it was just boring it, to be honest was, and I really love classic Hollywood and old Hollywood I knew all the people like most of the people who were talking about it and um, I just did not see what the movie was about mm. well, we were sort of sold that it was about the writing of sorry if you can hear a drill um, about the writing of Citizen Kane, but I didn't. I didn't get that at all. Yeah, you. Yeah, we saw him writing that. something. But yeah, but no it never mentioned Citizen doing. Kane at all. I don't know whether I've just been a bit like thick and and the, the events that were happening. All sorry, that so, drill is really loud. <laughs> so the, I think the, the what the film was supposed to be about, and I didn't like kind of get this until the very last kind of ten minutes. The film is supposed to be about how at this election. That that was when the main character, um, Herman Mankiewicz, kind of turned on his relationship mm-hmm. with um, William Randolph Hearst, um, and that that's why he wrote Citizen Kane. Yeah, um, that's what it's, it's supposed not clear, to be about. It? But it really doesn't make that like <laughs> that. That happens towards the end of the movie, mm. and it's and I just found it really difficult to to get into because it flashes back and forwards and back and forwards all the time. Yeah. Um, and I didn't know why it was doing it. I just didn't see why that was necessary. Mm. Um, Disappointing for a David Fincher film. Yeah, yeah. I'm, it looked great. It, yeah. it really did look fantastic, That's and kind the of black and white was, was <laughs> yeah, the black and white was lovely and, and all that. But it really just didn't do anything for me whatsoever. Yeah. I'm Nobody's afraid. Talking about it, no. Anymore. And for that reason, that's why I said production design. And even Gary Oldman. I mean, yeah, yeah. I think the reason he's been nominated is because he's in the whole film. I don't mm. think it's necessarily because he does anything extra special. Yeah, that's what you mean. In terms of awards, how it's done, it, it has literally only been winning production design i think i don't yeah recall anything else really happening it's one of those it's, it's like la la land in a way you know that had 14 nominations and then mm-hmm. they really came out with a couple you know yeah um but in this case yeah it's a bit more extreme than that so they could probably come out with one unless mm. they decide they really don't like it and give production design to the father or even you know they could go tenet you know or news of the world they could do anything you'll have to see yeah interesting so okay next film now, this is the foreign language film, isn't it? It's actually not considered in the foreign language category this year, and I think it's because it's a it's an American co-production. Right, okay. I, I, don't, I, I might be wrong in that, but, yeah, it's not being considered for 
uh, international film in this, in this for the instance. academy. I should say, yeah. yeah. Like you're gonna have to tell me what this is about because I have absolutely oh, no idea. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, <laughs> I forgot where I was. So this is Minari, and it's essentially about an Asian American family who have moved from California, and the main character is played by Stephen Yoon. He's the father of the family, I suppose. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. got they've got two. He's got two kids and his wife. And he wants to just make their life just better. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, sorry. It's really hard to explain because it is it's a very simple film. You know, he even says to his son at one point, "Why did we move here? You know, mm. remind me why we did this." And his little boy, played by Alan Kim, who's adorable, just said, "Because we had nothing." Um, and that's pretty much what it is. And he's got this dream that he's going to convert this land. You know, they've bought like an RV like on wheels you know just yeah. in the middle of nowhere and he's going to start farming and make it successful and, and just make it work for them and it, yeah. it's, it's a really really sweet film and uh, speaking of Stephen Yoon in the best actor category um, he's great because he obviously works with the kids um, on the other hand he's got like relationship issues with his wife and on mm. the other hand his work and things like that he's quite desperate and determined and then they come across problems with money and and water even at one point but also it's a very funny film as well and he's very good at doing good at doing that but the i think this the standout performance i wish they would stop someone's got like a chainsaw or something outside <laughs> oh well. um uh, yeah the standout performance is from Yu jung yoon who plays the the grandmother who comes over from korea to come and live with them yeah, and she's nominated in the best supporting actress category. She's the cool Korean grandma you'd, you'd always want. Yeah. You know, what I mean, she's the Korean Celia Imri. You know, she's <laughs> she's fantastic. Honestly, she's um, yeah, a revelation. It's a shame that we're only seeing her over here. You know, now. And how um, likely is it that she'll come out with with the award? Is I it... think pretty likely. Yeah, so she's yeah, the favorite. I think she then. she won the the SAG and she won the BAFTA. I think uh, it, it's great. She's got a great arc with the little boy. Um, mm-hmm. who just he keeps saying to her you're not a real grandma because she doesn't bake cookies and she doesn't <laughs> you know she doesn't do all the conventional you western things the stereotype <laughs> yeah and he sort of pranks her quite a lot and mm-hmm. you know there's lots of cultural differences but you know their relationship blossoms and it's really really touching yeah um yeah it's a great role as well as a great performance and she's my pick uh, original score it's nominated for here and it's oh it's very unusual it's used quite minimally but it's very unique. It reminded me of like Shape of Water. That kind of it really stood out. Yeah, um, and it's hard to describe in a way. It's kind of like a Korean infused, almost sort of heavenly. I've written ethereal, <laughs> a little aliany. Um, and it's hard to say why it fits the film, but it probably is because it's quite relaxing and unobtrusive. And yeah, yeah, I, I really like that. But I, I don't think it's going to win. Soul has won across the board for yeah score. Best Original Screenplay, which is a really deserving nomination mm-hmm. in a category that's really stacked. Um, it's semi-autobiographical, which gives it this element of authenticity and the level of detail about how they live their life and what they do for work and their health and their faith and right down to the detail of how they get rid of their rubbish, you know, from mm-hmm. the from the RV and how he's doing his farming and stuff. It's really, like, true to life, um, almost like you couldn't write it. How do you pick from from the screenplay category? It is a difficult one, I think. So we, what else we've we got? We've got Promising Young Woman, mm-hmm. Trial of the Chicago 7, Sound of Metal, which would be my pick, and I'll explain later why. Yeah. And then something else. Judas <laughs> and the Black Messiah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It'll have a hard run to beat some of those other ones. I yeah, think. I think there's a definite standout in there. Yeah. Which I'm sure you'll get to. <laughs> yes. yes um, so. The other thing about the, the screenplay, actually, is it's kind of written with three generations of people in mind. And, mm-hmm. and not only does it focus on them as a family unit, but it, it branches out into the individual relationships so of the brother yeah. and sister, husband and wife, father and son, mother and daughter, grandparent, grandchild. Um, it's really, really well done. It's so convincing. Um, and that's um, all down to Lee Isaac Chung, who's the, who's the director. Uh, yeah, he sort of directed it in two languages for two cultures and three generations, including children. The cast is incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, so it deserves to be there, basically. Yeah, it's a great film. It'd be my second choice for Best Picture. Oh, wow. I think. Okay. Uh, it's just so nice. Yeah. I'll have to get round to that one then. Definitely have to get to it's that nice. one. just nice. That's why I think you'd like it. It reminded yeah. me of Places in the Heart and films like that. Yeah. Not just because it's so far, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, for lots of reasons. Okay. 
that takes us to halfway through. Mm, it does. Yeah. And you're ne- you've got the next one as well. So I do, yeah, this one's a hefty one. You're going to have to tell me a lot about <laughs> this one because I keep hearing the name of it all the yes. time. So the next film is Nomadland. And I think the best way to describe the film is to talk about Francis McDormand's character, who's mm-hmm. called Fern, because the character's kind of really inseparable from, from the story. Uh, she's uh, in her 60s. She's lost her husband. This is right at the beginning of the film before anything happens. Um, uh, but she's also lost her job and she's having to move out of her town because it was a it was a mining community and it's closed down, basically. So she's found herself essentially homeless and then stumbles into a new community of modern day nomads. So these are people who like, don't really have a home. They're travelers, pretty much, you know, move from place to place. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and the film is just about her like adapting to that lifestyle and adapting to being alone and independent and self-sufficient in this tiny space, you know, usually out in the middle of nowhere with bad weather and reconciling her circumstances. And the weird thing about it, I say it's weird. The great thing about it is that it's, it's almost a documentary. So Mm -hmm. in terms of Francis McDormand's performance, it's not showy, um, but it is really authentic because a lot of the things that the character is going through she's actually having to do herself well they went and lived it didn't they yeah if I'm, pretty much. If I'm correct they actually th- went and did that yeah and i think a lot of the supporting cast were were real people and they yeah. didn't realize she was an actress like that you know they they thought she was doing a documentary with them yeah um so you do see her like pissing and shitting and cutting her own hair and being cold and wet and dirty and doing the jobs that she does, you know, she picks up part-time jobs wherever she is. And yeah. you know, see her, we see her as a cleaner and shoveling potatoes and um, you're working in a diner and Amazon um, and things like that. Yeah. Uh, so it must have been a great experience to film. Um, but it, it's it's hard to say whether that means that it's a great performance or whether she's just being a version of herself. I don't I don't really mm. know how it's going to go. I, I think she could win um, yeah. for this. It, but it is a, a different kind of performance in a different kind of film. But yeah um the screenplay is another interesting one again like i said it's like it's a documentary yeah um, the book it's based on is non-fiction so what chloe Zhao has done in adapting this sort of created a structure and a character journey out of yeah. just other people's true stories so i think that's really interesting but i think because the father has now come in and it's very story 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 mm-hmm. it could go that way instead so i don't really know cinematography is the is the one i think is a lock yeah it does look absolutely gorgeous in some mm. ways it, it's the, what it's done the way it's been filmed from what yeah. i can see even in just the trailer mm-hmm. The biggest thing going for it is the location shooting because it's all mm-hmm. pretty much just it's out in the world and, and looking at, at what's there. And I really like the natural light that they use as well. There's a really mm-hmm. nice sunset, um, sorry, sunrise scene. And then they, there's campfires and lanterns and things like that. Yeah. The great shot from the trailer, I think, is where she's walking through one of the campsites. It's a massive tracking shot. And it yeah. It goes along very, very, yeah, really nice to look at. I don't think it's going to lose. Editing is another one. <laughs> it's like, realize how, how many nominations these films have got. <laughs> um, it's a funny one again because it's not really like a story as such. It's edited on impulse, I think, yeah. and on instinct. And again, Chloe Zhao did all of the editing herself, mm-hmm. um, which is fantastic. Um, so it's like, a, yeah, it's like a condensed montage. Really, it gives that, it really gives that sense of a life that moves around a lot. And mm-hmm. It's quite free flowing. Um, I don't think it's the showiest though, so I don't think it's going to win there. But Chloe Zhao, in general, as a director, and I think she probably will win here, even if she doesn't win for her other things like editing and screenplay. Like she will get this one. Um, it's just yeah, technically it's it's flawless. The balance of tone, you know, because it's very sad circumstances, but the way the character finds a way to laugh away the pain, you know, in mm-hmm. a way. Um, yeah, it's very thoughtful and very genuine human film yeah um, and it's like a documentary which which is why i think best picture is also a very certain can i say that a very certain <laughs> you can say yeah that. shout uh it obviously speaks to yeah, america so this at is, this yeah, time it's the one that looks like it's going to pick up the big mm-hmm. one yeah sort of it speaks to the re- recession that happened mm-hmm. and, uh, especially about middle america where it's like you know it's kind of like a forgotten community of seniors yeah. senior citizens really who have been 
abandoned, you know, or yeah. though they've been let down by the social security benefits system and employment and housing and healthcare and industry. And yeah, it just puts things into perspective, really, that yeah. you, you can't take a roof over your head for granted and tin mm-hmm. openers that work and <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> so yeah, I think I think we're going to be seeing this take the top awards. Um, something drastic would have to happen, I think, for it not to happen. Mm. But yeah, wow. So yeah, hefty one there. Sorry if I no no went on. No, There's lots to say. We'll see. Mm. Right, the next <laughs> one is my. <laughs> I'm not, but I'm going to keep them in my head. <laughs> so this next one um, is my best picture pick. I don't even have to see it anymore to know that this will stay at the top of my list. Mm. Um, so this is promising young woman. I know you you didn't think as much of it, but I just thought this was it was something else. Um, it was what we needed right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so promising young woman from the trailer, it almost looks like it's going to be some kind of horror film. <laughs> so yeah, it's, um, I, I was. You know, yeah, I'll, I'll speak at the end. Sorry, it's Kerry, <laughs> it's Kerry Mulligan, and from the trailer, you see her as this drunken woman going out to clubs and getting herself absolutely shit faced, basically not knowing what she's doing, and then having you know men take advantage of her basically um but then it turns out she's not drunk at all mm. she's ex- she's completely sober absolutely aware and um and you think it's going to be like oh my god what the hell is she going to do to these men <laughs> you know yeah. that's what you think from the trailer but it's it's abs- it's actually nothing like that whatsoever um it has this in the trailer you also see like this romantic element is she going to change she's going to meet this this guy who's going to be the one and it's not it's totally not what the trailer um, says was, and yeah, I wasn't no. that keen on it from the trailer. To be honest, I thought I don't know if I watched the trailer. You know, I don't remember. I thought it looked okay, but it didn't really it it didn't really sell it to me. But then when I actually watched the movie, it was my sister who said, "You have to see this." Mm-hmm. Um, I said, "We're going to watch this." So I, I I saw it, and it really did actually blow me away. Um, <laughs> I thought Carrie Mulligan was absolutely Ooh, yeah. spot on. She's brilliant. the best thing about the film. Oh, she was fantastic. Um, and the film's actually, it, I, I would say that the film is mostly about trauma, mm-hmm. um, PTSD, um, yeah. and m- like moving on with your life. Um, mm. And this, I just thought it was absolutely fantastic. So but um, the, the gist of the movie is that her, and you don't get it straight away. You don't get what's happened straight away, but um, her best friend, during medical school was abused at a party um by um other like a load of men he did it in front of all of his friends and everybody saw it and nobody did anything and nothing was done about it mm-hmm. to the point where it it traumatized her friends so much that um she she committed suicide um and the Carrie Mulligan's character her whole life from this just stops it stalls and this becomes her life Mm -hmm. and what she's going to do about it and that's I'm not going to say anything else because I don't (laughs) want to give anything away but that's why she is the way she is um and her her whole life is just is just built around this um and I it really it blew me away because of the performances I thought the screenplay was um absolutely fantastic and mm-hmm. um, because you didn't know what quite what was going to happen I didn't I thought oh yeah I've got this I know exactly what's going to happen with this yeah I, I can see this right down the line I know what's going to happen definitely played with the conventions uh, the expectations it didn't do what I thought it was going to do so many times um mm-hmm. and I just thought oh that is just brilliant because i mean we see so many films now and you just most of the time you can pinpoint it yeah, you, you know this is where we're exactly going a b c yeah. and this one it was like right we're gonna go a d z t <laughs> it just literally it just went in so many different directions yeah. um which i thought was fantastic so for me screenplay this has got to win screenplay because this, it was yeah this just, will win i really sure. hope it does because it it deserves the recognition because it was fantastic yeah um, it's just a new way of absolutely doing yeah. that theme i think and it's so timely the film is so so timely um about um abuse and what's actually done about it mm-hmm. um and uh, like like you know crying rape um and what like you know the men's point of view the women's point of view mm-hmm. um 
for me it could have come out at any other time mm-hmm. um yeah. So and I will say, go into this with your eyes open, but don't come out expecting to love men because you probably won't for a couple of days afterwards. You're going to hate men. Well, the men in the film I thought was really like weird. The, like the casting of them, I thought was really mm. unusual. But this is the thing. My my overall issue with Promising Young Men is I couldn't tell if some of the decisions that have been made about sometimes the look of the film, the direction mm-hmm. of the film, the casting of the film were deliberate, or whether they were like I don't know, like. It just seemed weird. Like, Kerry Mulligan, to me, seemed almost like she was miscast in the end because everybody else was, like, a very, like, American comedians. Like, mm. it reminded me of American comedies like Game Night and Tag and Horrible Bosses. But the performance that Kerry Mulligan was giving was from an Oscar film. Do you know what I mean? I, I couldn't yeah. quite find I think the that's balance the po- of the genres. I think that's the point because everybody else is living this one life and think mm. she's in there living it with them, but she's not. She's living this totally other line. It's a, in a way, it's a, it's a piss take of those kinds of films, like you know, that have those attitudes you know, and have gotten away with it. Yeah, but I think I, Emerald I Fennell sure. um, knew exactly what she was doing with every single shot of this film. Mm. I, I, that's my take. I think she knew exactly what she wanted to look mm. like, where she was going, and it feels that way to me. It feels like it's in like it's in someone's hands. Some films just feel directed. You can see the choices. You can yeah. feel that somebody has put this together. And I felt that with with this. I think Emerald Fennell absolutely deserves to be in that Best Director mm-hmm. category because she's made a hell of a film. Um, I think every every um, nomination here is absolutely deserved. Um, and for me, I, I would love to see it win Best Picture because uh, I just think it's so... Yeah, timely. I think the performances are fantastic and I think it doesn't do what you expect. Mm-hmm. And that for me in a film nowadays is one of the it's the they're the ones that stick with me because yeah. we just know the layout of movies now. You can you know what's <laughs> coming, you know what to expect, but this didn't do that. Yeah, so I think a lot me, of people would yeah. agree with you that it's the pick. My only issue is that I don't think it's the full package necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, I've and had, I do with, with mm-hmm. this film. Sorry to interrupt. Just, no, no. just to say before I forget, this film more than anything else, I think for years people are saying, "Have you seen Promising Young Woman?" I even got a message right, from yeah. my best friend last night. She went, "Have you seen Promising Young Woman?" I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, I saw it a couple of months ago." She went, "Oh my god! Oh my god!" She said, and I was just telling her, you know, I think that it's getting a bit of buzz, but and if it wins some uh, awards, it might get a little a bit, bit more. Yeah. Um, but she said, right, so word of mouth, I'm going to tell everybody about this movie. Yeah, I think one of my issues was that I'd only heard that it was the best film ever made. So when I went in, inevitably yeah, I was going to be disappointed a little bit. I still gave it four out of five stars. I thought, you know, mm-hmm. I think thematically, most of all, and Kerry Mulligan, it's it's brilliant. Um, I just didn't know where I sat with it. <laughs> I, just didn't, I just didn't. I think the aesthetic of it puts me off a little bit because it's not mm-hmm. your conventional. Um, yeah, I I like that though. I'm and this is coming from me. I usually like conventional, you know, but I, it's the fact that it's not. Yeah, that but it, it reminded really me of like me. Palm Springs. It's very colourful and fun. Mm, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, but I like sometimes associate that with like flicks, you know, like a bit of a, a comedy rom com. Yeah. But again, I think I need to rewatch it because yeah. I can't work out yet what was deliberate and what's my preference and what's gone mm. wrong. If like anything. I say, I think everything in it is deliberate i think she's mm. done it all on purpose just um, if anything maybe the film's had the right effect on me mm. that it's made me that feel you want to watch bit... it again you want to see it yeah. and, and check because you cut you need to see yeah. it again to make your decision yeah mm. i think in terms of the story like unlike a lot of people i did see everything that was coming but it mm. also did less than i was expecting mm. so like mm. it's like you said <laughs> one of those things like there's not really that many twists because every time you think she's going to do something, it, it's like an it's like a anti twist, isn't mm. it? Because it builds up to you thinking that's going to happen and a twist yeah. is going to happen. Like you said, twists in a way now are, com- are not twists anymore because we know they're going to happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but this Absolutely, one like subverts yeah. that and goes backwards, yeah. inverts them, I should say. Mm-hmm. Um, 
yeah sorry it's, it's a funny one uh, it's, it's a great conversation topic though <laughs> I, oh it is it i don't think it you can watch this talking. yeah i mean my husband didn't even watch the film and he he came in and we were having a conversation about it for about mm. 40 minutes afterwards and he didn't even <laughs> sit and watch it it's it, it really is one of those that y- you will talk about yeah. which is good because there aren't enough movies like that yeah that w- you can come out of and have a really good discussion about them now your next one i think i might watch this today because oh, i'm do. really looking forward to watching oh. this so tell us about this one this is what i think if i could give this seven out of five stars i would have done wow the sound of metal and starting with the acting categories so mm-hmm. riz ahmed who's mm-hmm. in the leading actor category and he plays ruben and here are some of the things that he did in preparation for the film just yeah. a few things. Uh, he had a personal trainer. He does spend a lot of the time of the film, you know, like sort of half naked, sweaty mm-hmm. veins, tattoos. He's got his hair dyed blonde. Uh, so physically, it's a, it's a transformation. He mm-hmm. spent seven months learning how to drum, play the drums. Mm-hmm. In the film, we see him on stage and off stage with very different personas. This is where the story comes in. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, the film is about the very sudden realization that something is seriously wrong with his hearing. Um, and he loses about 80% of his hearing overnight, pretty much what feels like overnight. Um, And the emotions that he battles with throughout the film make it so intense. I don't think I breathed until the credits Mm -hmm. had finished. And throughout, he cycles through rage, fear, shame, denial, Mm -hmm. anger, sadness, frustration, panic, paranoia, withdrawal. It's such an intense performance. I'd say it's as, as intense as Joaquin Phoenix doing Joker, mm-hmm. like if not wow. more. Um, and he's playing a recovering heroin addict as well, uh, which is a huge factor in the direction the story takes and mm-hmm. and the way he portrays the ability and inability to cope with his situation. Mm-hmm. He learnt American Sign Language for eight months for the role. It's phenomenal. It's a phenomenal performance. So you um, put everything skill, into it, basically. Yeah, the skill he's put into it to pull it off and do it convincingly yeah. is astounding. And I don't know why he's not getting talked about. Um, it really bothers me because mm-hmm. um, it is, in my eyes, by far the best performance mm-hmm. that's nominated in that category, more than Anthony Hopkins mm-hmm. and more than Chadwick Boseman, in my eyes. Well, this is the thing. When somebody's put their all into it like that, mm-hmm. um you know, you've got that. That should be looked at. I mean, look at Leonardo DiCaprio when he won for The Revenant. Mm. He won because of what he put into it, yeah, which was yeah. completely deserved. Yeah. But then, I mean, I, I was watching a, just a little bit of an interview last night for the father, and Anthony Hopkins was asked how you know how he how he went into this, how he did it, and he just said, yeah. "Well, I just go into it. It's in the script. I just do it." Mm. So he just goes in and does it. Whereas <laughs> you know, like you look at talent, the, yeah. yeah, and you, then you look at the alternative, and this guy's gone, and he's done all of this stuff. Like he's yeah, he's m- learned things, months months. he's changed his life yeah. to create this part. And he's also he's obviously a British Pakistani yeah. actor. Like he's he's not American. Exactly. Either. You know that to me that should be acknowledged. Yeah. It's so confusing to me how he's not getting talked about more. If yeah. he won on the night, I would be the happiest person mm. for a day or so. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he drives the film pretty much. Yeah. Um, there is a supporting actor nomination for Paul Racy, who plays mm-hmm. Joe, and he's kind of, I mean, the film and the story orients around Reuben going into a it's a sober house for mm-hmm. the deaf. So it, because of what's happening with his hearing, his addiction is threatening to reappear. Mm-hmm. Um, so he has to sort of admit himself as much as he really doesn't want to, and admit that he's got you know that he's disabled yeah um into this program and this is what paul race's character runs and he's a deaf character himself and a recovering alcoholic and a vietnam war veteran but what's unusual about this role is it's really understated he's so calm and controlled all the way through yeah Um, so it almost doesn't feel like yeah but it's an invisible role you don't ever think about this as being an actor it's a character like through and through yeah he's just doing it wisdom filled father of this community it's really 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 nice performance and it i don't think it's going to win obviously the same category as daniel kalia again um but if he did win it would be the kind of mark rylance win Mm -hmm. yeah but the sound and this is the only sound nomination i think we're talking about yeah (laughs) you can see you can see why (laughs) yeah i read somewhere that actually there's never been a film with sound in the title 
that's been nominated that hasn't won <laughs> in, wow. in the sound okay. category. I might be wrong, but I did, I did read that somewhere. Um, so I really like it when films break the mold and do something that you've never seen done before. Mm-hmm. And the reason I think this is already won is because it's done that and it plays with sonic perspectives yeah um in the way that it shifts in and out of his point of view like in and out of his head really and i have to say i think it is one to watch i mean if it doesn't come out in the cinema i'd say try and watch it with headphones or something i say that because i don't know if it will have the same effect if you're watching it just across the room Mm because it's designed to make you experience exactly what he can and can't hear and it's so acute like some of the things that they've done Mm -hmm. and there's no score in the film either Um, yeah so yeah, they they really do make you feel like I, that you're in his head, and it's yeah. the definition of immersive cinema. It really heightens the story and and makes you so close to the character that you're actually you actually are him, mm-hmm. um, to the point where um, one I think I don't know if they do it more than once, but there's definitely one scene where they've designed a microphone to go into his mouth. Wow! And it picks up. Um, obviously his breathing and his mm-hmm. jaw clicking his bones creaking you can hear his eyelids opening and closing and you can feel the he's t- touching wow. his ear and you can hear the you know the sound of um mm-hmm. your finger on your skin as if it's rough if you put your head under yeah. the water and did it it, it oh, blew me away like mm-hmm. absolutely amazing um editing is also here the sound and the editing is kind of hand in hand mm-hmm. and it's noticeable when you do cut in and out of his head you know you jump yeah. from the subjective and the objective um so it, it might win this is this is the one of the three categories i think is really up in the air mm-hmm. uh sorry more nominations screenplay um i think it's really clever how it um incorporates some scenes that are completely non-verbal you know it must yeah. be really hard to write and to sort of for an actor to then take that mm-hmm. and do something with it and obviously it just incorporates sign language jumps in and out of perspectives i don't think it will win uh it'd be my choice but i think promising young woman has got the advantage of the themes mm-hmm. and the genre subversion so um but it's a really great category as we said and the best picture uh, it actually took 12 years to get made it's a directorial debut by darius mm-hmm. marder which is astounding when you see it you'll be like how can you only have yeah. only have made one feature film and it's this um but it really drives that message that it's about ability and not disability yeah and yeah it's a proper experience this film oh <laughs> i love it it would be my best So we know what your favourite is. We know what my favourite is. Okay, so the last film that we're going to talk about Mm -hmm. is The Trial of the Chicago 7. Yes. um, Which I was not looking forward to going into this. Um, I see what you mean. I I was just like, "Mm -hmm, yeah, okay. It's just another one of those films, Yeah, I'm sure it'll be good. It'll be fine. Um, And I watched this last weekend, and I'm still thinking about it in some ways. Um, I I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. Now, Mm. this is um, basically, it is about a trial that happened in America. um, And it was around, (laughs) um, it was in in Chicago, yeah. And it was... um, (laughs) It basically, <laughs> it, was, it was. It was seven people, and it was basically about whether they incited riots mm. um, uh, to do with an election, um, or whether they didn't. Whether it was the police that started it, and the, I mean, I cannot believe this is like a real, a real thing. You're watching it, and you're thinking, "This isn't real. This can't possibly have happened," because it is so prejudice against them yeah you're just like how the hell like the judge honestly frank langello is fantastic oh, he always good. is but my yeah. god i wanted to <laughs> absolutely bray that it's man <laughs> i honest to god it was like are you actually hearing this is this oh, how no. the hell is this going on how is really this really unprofessional oh it was unbelievable um th- so this film was um directed by aaron sorkin who obviously we know is an amazing sc- uh, screenwriter mm. And I thought it was really well done. I mean, he's known for his dialogue, um, and yeah, dialogue it shows heavy. in this as well. It's all there. Um, really well done. I think this, the screenplay nominations well deserved, and you know that coming in. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it is really the, the the screenplay. The dialogue is is really what stands out. It's peppy and it's fast, and it's the editing kind of fits in with that. It's yeah, very fast. yeah. Bam, 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 lots bam. and lots and lots of cutting away and yes. edit, um, montages and yeah, um, 
Uh, so, and obviously, again, it's it's based on a, a true story, so um, you've got that going for it as well. Um, cinematography, it's not well, got not a chance mentioned. when you put it yeah. next to other things. Um, yeah. It's just it really well yeah. made, and it's one of those yeah. people just struggling for. Um, song, Enjoyed. not a surprise that it's there because, you know, you've got a film like this, you can have one of those uplifting, powerful songs to go with it, you know. Um, so that's not surprising. Um, Sasha Baron Cohen for supporting actor. And there were so many supporting actors yeah, in this film not, <laughs> that you could have really picked sure anyone. I'm not sure why exactly he got picked. Like, because yeah. he's not got like the standout performance to me. Um, he's not mm. the one who did the most. He's not, you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but too, yeah. you do really like. I really liked his character. Yeah, I really, really did like his character. So, I, I kind of get it, and I don't get it. Yeah, it could I have gone think to any of them. Yeah, I don't I think, think like, he's got Frank a Langella and um, Mark Rylance actually in this film. Yeah, were absolutely. Probably the two that butted heads and had the most sort of emotionally. Absolutely, yeah. Charged um, scene. So, in a, in a way, it's a surprise it went to him rather yeah. than somebody else um and best picture yeah I can, I can definitely see why it's there it's full of stars it's about a true story it's it really well put together um so you can you can see it's why it's there but for me it's not really got much of a chance when put up against some of the others i have a feel a general sense i'm getting is that it'll be the second choice best picture mm. nomination. I, I think of, a lot of it is to do yeah, with the cast yeah exactly and the subject matter it's so it's so yeah. american you know <laughs> it's um it, it's something that they'll all i mean i i have to admit i love films like this when they're so kind of it's all about this one event that you know nothing about you've never heard yeah, anything about that's I how love, we learn isn't it yeah I've i, I always love films like that. that um so for me like personally it would be my second favorite right so okay. so far um so, I, I I I wouldn't be bothered if it if it did win because I did really enjoy it. I, I mm -hmm. enjoyed it a lot more than I was expecting because I was not expecting much going in. Like I said, it, it has that feeling of oh, it's another one of those films. Yeah, it's it's but a it's funny type of film. Fun. It's yeah, it, it isn't. It it's got that enjoyment factor that an Oscar movie doesn't always have. Yeah. Um, it's a true story and there are serious themes in there and serious moments, but there's also a lot of laughs as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I did come away from it thinking, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. And I've recommended it to other people that you've got to watch this. You know, I think you'd really like this. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I wrote one sentence in preparation for this. I put, enjoyed it. Maybe would have been a better documentary, <laughs> but it's one of those. That I, yeah. It could have worked as either, really. Yeah. Um, and been just as good. But yeah, it's one of those. I think what what's going against it at the moment is that it came out so long ago. I think yeah. it's maybe even longer than Mank came out at the mm, end of last year online. Forgotten about it. Yeah. And it sort of like dropped off the map, but it has done well. I mean, it won the Golden Globe Screenplay Award. They don't separate theirs into adapted yeah. and original. So early on, it was like, ah. Ooh, Trial of Chicago 7. Mm. And then it's won, obviously, the Ensemble Award at um, uh, the SAG Awards. And I think it also maybe won one of the Ensemble. I don't know if the Critics' Choice might have done that. Um, but yeah, um, I think it's a solid film, but I just don't know if it's like breaking new ground as such. Mm. As some others are. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really. We're looking at the eight films. It's a it's a solid bunch. Yeah, considering um, the year that we. <laughs> yeah, had. it's different. I think there's some films in there that you think, yeah, pure. They're purely Oscar movies. You would expect yeah. them any other year. But then there's stuff like I think the Sound of Metal just is like one of those that really stands out. You wouldn't maybe expect that. You know, it's like you say, Minari is is slightly different, small, compact, mm -hmm. such a pleasant film. Eight twenty four film. Going yeah, to you know, so this, there are films in there that you think, oh, it's just nice to see that they've got mm. in, you know, that, they've, that they're being recognised. I actually didn't tally them up, but how many are from Netflix, Amazon? Netflix, I mean, people talk about Netflix, oh, you know, they own everything, they're ruling everything, you know, 
but, but they do still Netflix, make good yeah they make fantastic movies and they are putting their money where their mouth is mm-hmm. and yeah. they are um they are exploring yeah okay they've got stuff like bridgerton which you know which <laughs> you know bridgerton's like the biggest thing on the planet at the moment <laughs> you know and but, but it, it is i have seen it it's fantastic bridgerton by the way um but they're also making stuff like the trial of the chicago seven things yeah. like that and and the documentaries that they put forward and they're putting money forward to make sure that these things are getting out there and i think that's so important netflix is in i mean i always like netflix anyway um but they've come up so far in my estimations because Mm. of what they're putting the money behind the what you always hear and you hear it every single time that filmmakers come to netflix having not worked with them before and they just say Mm -hmm. they just left us alone to do it yeah there's no interference they just leave them to make it yeah and that is so refreshing to hear. Yeah, to the fact even when Martin Scorsese went to do The Irishman mm. with them, that was the big first example, wasn't it, where yeah. that he put his faith in them is, is definitely saying something. Mm-hmm. So well, let me say, it's seven days to go. It's happening, well, for us, it's the morning of the 26th of April. At this moment in time, I know you've not seen too much. I thought it might be good just to run down and see what might be what, our predictions or any locks that we think mm-hmm. are actually going to happen in these categories. Um, I don't know if you have any off the bat based on what um, we've talked about now today. Uh, what, what I think will will win. Absolutely. 100%. Um, if you have to put money on it today. <laughs> not right, I'll just pick some of the big ones. I won't go through everything. But, yeah. Um, I would say I think Nomadland is a, is a, a sure thing pretty much for Best Picture yeah. and Director. Yeah. Um, Leading actor, I'm not sure. I don't, I, I don't that's, know if you could yeah. pick that. That's one, one of the but... categories I think. In fact, no, there's four categories. I think that's yeah, one of the ones. I mean, I haven't seen some look. of the other films, but like you said, Chadwick Boseman's won a lot, but Anthony mm-hmm. Hopkins is very good. Um, again, leading mm-hmm. actress, very difficult to say because I mean, we haven't even mentioned Vanessa Kirby. Um, yeah, who uh, I mean, I haven't seen the film yet, but apparently she's fantastic as she's well. She's very good, but it's a one nomination film. Do you exactly. know what I mean? It's not, not nominated yeah. for anything else. It's like Glenn Close the other year. Um, yeah, that's that's right. But that category is, I think people are saying it's the most up in the air it's ever been. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, I think it'll go to Frances McDormand. You know, I I, I, I think do it th- could. I think it because she's the name. She's yeah. the name, you know. She's the what she's won Oscars before, you know. I, I just don't know. I think, and because of the love of the film, it, it'll get picture and director. I think it might just push just sort of naturally that where people through. can't make the decision, they'll go with that one. I, I think if there's ever going to be a tie in this category, it will be this year. Yeah, I think Daniel Kaluuya is probably a, 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 just a sure thing. Um, yeah, supporting actress, I don't know because I haven't seen them, and what I saw, I wasn't particularly bothered about. But like you say, Minari is the that's the one that's going to go. Um, so now in terms of screenplay, adapted screenplay, I think um is a difficult one because I haven't I've only seen the father the third so of far. The four categories I think has gone into flux. It yeah. was no mad hands for the taking, and now it's. Yeah, um, so that's a difficult one to call. But for me, um, Promising Your Woman has to win Best Original Screenplay because yeah. I just thought it was superb. So that, for me, is the one I want to go for. Um, and I'll just stick in there. One that I do think is probably going to win is Soul for Animated Feature. I think that's probably a lock. Um, but that that's where I'd go at the moment, I think, okay. in, in terms of the big ones. The, the other categories that seem to be locked are uh, costume hair and makeup sorry costume hair and makeup mm-hmm. uh which ma rainey has swept across the board uh, pinocchio's nominated which mm-hmm. i watched last night <laughs> made me want to uh jump out of a window <laughs> but, um <laughs> it visually it, it's very impressive it's just a, it's just a god awful film mm-hmm. um the yeah so ma rainey is gonna reel in some some wins there probably soul like you say animated um, and score it's been winning although a lot of love for wolf walkers and if it you know it could be a, a last minute moonlight moment with <laughs> with wolf walkers which i think you would absolutely adore i think you'll like it more than promising your woman if i'm honest i think it's really 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 exciting my street. <laughs> absolutely uh sound of metal for sound productions and for mank yeah 
uh, what else haven't we covered? Song. It's a funny one. I think that's the. F- As we've been talking, I've been adding more. I think there's five categories that are really up in the air. Song is one of them. So we've got the um, the big sort of epic closing song from Eurovision Song Contest mm-hmm. uh, versus Speak Now, which is my favourite from One Night in Miami, sung by Leslie Odom Jr., who's nominated in the supporting mm-hmm. category. Uh, the the Diane Warren, who's been nominated about eleven times and never won, <laughs> song. From the life ahead, I think it's the Sophia Loren foreign language film. Mm-hmm. The the fight one, <laughs> I'll fight for you from Judas, which I don't think has a chance, and then that's something else as well. So yeah, that's a, that's a category that really could go anywhere. Editing is Trial of the Chicago Seven versus Sound of Metal. No one knows. Adapted screenplay is No Madland versus The Father. Actor is Hopkins versus Bozeman. Actress is just, I mean, I could win it at this point, you know. Mm. <laughs> anyone, anyone could win. Um, so those are, yeah, they're really, really quite hard to predict, but it's all happened like within the last 24 hours or so, maybe in the yeah. last week that these ones have now been thrown out of balance. Some films that might come away with nothing, Mank, maybe, The Father, maybe. Yeah. Uh, One Night in Miami, possibly, maybe, perhaps. So, yeah. It uh, it's, yeah, happen. it's heating up. It's heating up. Lots to watch still, and uh, yeah, I'm sure at some point we'll we'll submit our full mm-hmm. predictions. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> on the internet, um, and I guess uh, all it leaves us to do is is there a film you'd like to recommend this week? Um, Promising Your Woman, definitely. <laughs> I, I really do think everybody should see it because of um, the message of the movie and how we see um, rape and abuse and things like that. I Mm. I really do think um, everyone should see it. And it's just been so well made and and the performances are just so good as well. It's a good example of everyone should see it, Mm -hmm. even if they don't like the film, you know, because it's about spreading the message and not, it's not about popularity. Yeah. So, yeah. And I'm looking forward to watching it again when the hype's sort of gone, (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know, just watch it separate to awards you know i've been watching it through an awards lens and i need to watch it as a film so yeah yeah um sound of metal for me uh no brain although uh, minari and nomadland are also up there in my five star films yeah um, but yeah sound of metal i genuinely found it to be a real experience and a you know a, a master class in cinema uh, yeah like filmmaking and uh, yeah if you've got headphones earphones please try and watch them because <laughs> otherwise i think you will miss some of the details that make it really special and that's and that's, that's it, it really. I, I think that's i think it's it's um quite nice that we've i mean you always have a favorite every year one that you're really really you've attached to and, and you'd really promote you there's usually one most years um but sorry from, i have to go back and think is there yeah <laughs> yes, is. well i'm thinking you know stuff like moonlight and things mm-hmm. like that things that you've really connected with and and that you push you every year you don't often have one uh, yeah no i don't think i have for a long time well I, there hasn't been i mean the last one that i really really i mean really enjoyed uh, i think it would be 2014 when it had like the theory of everything and oh, of course, yeah. um the imitation game yeah the imitation game things like that there was quite a lot of films in there that i really enjoyed and i would watch again um and this year promising young woman i've i so enjoyed that and i just thought i was so impressed by it Mm -hmm. um i haven't had that for ages and it's even though i've not watched and paid much attention to the oscars like i I have every other year it's been so refreshing to have that one film that Mm -hmm. has really kind of had an impact so i'm really pleased in that respect yeah. but i'm hoping next year i'm just back to normal and obsessed with the oscars again because this year has been it's been really scary that i've been like mm, it's the oscars i'm not really bothered because yeah. that's like who is who are you what's wrong with you it's like somebody else is possessing my body or something because i'm usually so into it um so i'm hoping next year is more normal yeah not long uh, less than a month now i think cinemas are going to be reopening here yeah i really hope that it, it um we're able to do it it's not going to be something that we have to and the film's actually worry too much out. about <laughs> yeah i really I, I really do want to i want to see but on that note um mm, I, that's it that's I, oscar week roundup yeah and obviously we'll see what happens and probably report back mm-hmm. sometime after the 20th um, yeah 
and see what how we did and what, <laughs> what we thought of the evening, which is going to be done in person. They are all getting COVID tested on site. Yeah. Um, it's going to be nice in a way because we haven't seen an award ceremony done in person. We've not seen anything done in person. It's <laughs> <laughs> just not been anything done properly. So that it will be it'll be nice to see. And it wouldn't be right if the Oscars didn't if they weren't the ones to do it. Yeah, it's too big a it's too big an event. I can't I just can't see any <laughs> other way you would do it. It's just yeah. not right. Yeah. Um so I, I hope everybody is um looking forward to it. They're gonna watch yes. it. Um and definitely get around to some of the films if you haven't seen them. Um because there's some really great ones on that list. Cool. Okay, so um, happy Oscars. Happy Oscars. <laughs> Are you going to ask me the question? Um, yeah, Matt, where can Ooh. they find us? Oh, it's funny you ask, because we're <laughs> everywhere. Um, you can find us on our website, which is www.cinechat.co.uk forward slash podcast, or you can find us on social media. Um, I'm very active on Twitter nowadays. I'm trying to make that, <laughs> trying to make that a thing. Yeah, you've, lear- uh, you've learnt Twitter. It's just addictive, I think. <laughs> so yeah, if you do if you do have those, please find us. You're usually just called Cinechat Podcast. Mm-hmm. Or you can email us, which no one has really done for a long time. <laughs> at... <laughs> podcast at cinechat.co.uk uh, I think I might email it just, so, you know, <laughs> just, just to make sure the email's <laughs> working make, make the dust sort of move away a bit so yeah and yeah I think that's and everything talk, you enjoyed talk it. to us about what you want to win because we'd yes. love to hear um, what people are, are rooting for mm, if it were up to you if you had a ballot what would you pick yeah okay so it's bye for me <laughs> and it's yeah. bye for me Oscars Ha <laughs> ha